Hello everyone, Stormy Strike here, and welcome to my Briarfest 2023 haul video. This is actually the first time in quite a while that I've done my Briarfest haul video after Briarfest instead of actually at Briarfest. So in the past I usually would show my haul at Briarfest, oftentimes even like showing what I got each day. But this time I am instead going to be categorizing things by kind of like what they are and where I got them. So I'll do like all the special runs together and all the Clarion finds together and things like that. So this year I did uh, buy a little bit more than I expected. I wanted to try and not buy too much, but at the same time I kind of wanted to splurge a little bit since last year I felt like I regretted not buying a lot of things. So this year I did allow myself to buy, you know, anything that I really loved that I came across and was a price that I was willing to pay and all that. So I did end up coming home with quite a lot of models that I'm just very excited and happy about. Without further delay, let's start getting into the haul video. Okay, well there is one model here that is not a part of my Briarfest haul video at all, but I wanted to show him to you anyway because I did get him uh, shortly before Briarfest. This is Battlefield Angel HP. I actually got him from Karina Roberts as compensation for judging a online model horse show called The Collective Show, which was really fun to judge, by the way. So I've ended up with this beautiful boy. He's one of the few like more recent regular runs that I've really been wanting. I don't think I'm going to take him out of his box for this video, though, but you can get an idea of him there. He is so gorgeous, and then I did see the actual horse there at Briarfest, which was part of the reason I thought I might show him in this video anyway, since the real horse was at Briarfest again this year. I have two things here to show from the medallion workshop I did, and so I do have this medallion that was pre-made and then we painted at the workshop. It does need a lot of work still, and I don't even know if I'm gonna keep painting it this bronze color. I might come up with some other different colors to paint it as. I'm not really sure yet, but it is a really cool medallion and I do look forward to eventually painting it more. And we also sculpted our own medallions. This one's going to be a little hard to see because it is white on white here. So unfortunately it's a little uh, squished and messed up because on the flight home it ended up just, it was very hard to keep it from not getting squished on the flight home and such. So I'll eventually work on fixing that and refining it. Now let's talk about the celebration model before we move on to the special runs. So here is Brevore 54. I have one that I unboxed and then one that is still in the box here. I guess I will briefly show his box. I am not going to be keeping this guy in the box though. I'm going to be taking this guy out and then him or the other one is going to probably eventually end up being a body at some point. And there was a point in time where I was trying to have like one celebration model in box for every year I go to Briarfest, but unfortunately with just how uh, big my collection is, I can no longer really keep doing that. I have to definitely just maybe keep one or two that I really, really like in their boxes and otherwise I just can't keep keeping all the celebration models in their boxes. But there's a gist of what his box looks like. I do think the overall design for their boxes and stuff this year is really nice. And now we'll take a closer look at Bravour himself here. He is on the Trickner, Tricaner. I don't know how you pronounce it. I hear people say it different ways, so I don't know what's correct. But I actually really like this mold. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I actually quite like it. I especially like the new tail that's on him. I think it is very pretty. And this new tail has been done to the mold for a while, by the way. So he's just a nice, simple bay, nothing too fancy, but I think he is very cute. I really like his face, especially. His face is just very cute and sweet. See, he's even got like a cute little kissy spot on his muzzle. He is so cute. He does also have white socks on his legs, which are pretty nicely masked off and the little peach hooves. And the addition that I really like this year, too, is this wonderful ribbon around his neck that says his name and Briarfest 2023. This is different from some of like the past ribbons that Briar has done on models and such. I really love this. I like that idea a lot, and I hope it is something that Briar will do again on their celebration models. 
I think it just really adds to the souvenir kind of aspect of it and it just looks really cool. I really enjoy it. So crossing my fingers that Briar does this again in future Briar Fest. So there is the handsome Brevoir 54. I almost forgot, fortunately I put it in my notes, but before we talk about the special run models I got, I do want to just briefly talk about the new packaging that Briar has done for the special runs this year. Although not all the special runs were done in this new eco-friendly packaging. The surprise model, for example, was done in their normal bubble wrap and whatnot. So I have some mixed feelings about this new eco packaging. It did seem to protect the models fine. There was like no damage to the models. That was not the issue. And I do deeply applaud Briar for doing this eco-friendly packaging. I just think that maybe it could use maybe a little bit more work. This stuff, I forget what this is called. It's kind of like a hun honeycomb or something kind of paper. But let me tell you, when I was opening my special runs, especially on like Friday morning, this stuff was like tearing up my hands when I was trying to open the models. It's just really, it's really scratchy. <laughs> it does not feel great trying to open up the models with uh, this honeycomb stuff all around them. So that aspect, not crazy about, but like I said, it does actually work in protecting the model. I know that was a big concern for a lot of people. The other issue is these paper bags that the models come in which is that I'm guessing because of the humidity and stuff, the bags actually start to break open. And someone in one of the rooms when I was shopping around actually said that their model just like fell straight out of a bag because the bag just completely broke. So I feel like there maybe needs to be a little work on that somehow too. These bags kind of come apart maybe a little too easily. But otherwise, again, I wanna say I do applaud Briar for making an eco-friendly route. I know for myself, having the bubble wrap was never an issue before because I always reused it for packing stuff because I sell for a living and such. But I know for other people, they do just kind of throw it away, which is not as good for the environment. Anyway, let's go to the actual special run models now. Okay, I'm going to show these special run models roughly in order of when and how I got them. So one of my absolute top two choices this year was this beautiful uh, Speos or Spios, however you pronounce it exactly. He is so gorgeous on the Animar mold, which is a mold I have absolutely fallen in love with. As you can already see here, I just got the normal variation. I did not get the decorator variation, which if I was to guess, I'm guessing there's probably like 200 or so made of that one, maybe 300. Getting the decorator would have been nice, but I am very happy with just this gorgeous guy. His color is so pretty. I personally really love these kind of coppery chestnuts that have the mane and tails that are like kind of really close to their body color and such. I have one or two other models in this color and I just absolutely love it. It is so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I do feel like the color of his mane and his body does kind of blend in a little too much like here. Kind of almost looks like overspray in a way, but it is totally fine. He is oh so beautiful. And on his belly, he does have Briarfest 2023 in black. You can kind of see a silver VIN number on his hoof there too. So absolutely adore this guy. Very, very happy that I made him one of my top choices because he is just gorgeous. Next up is Nemea, the decorator special run for this year. He was my other top choice of special runs. And oh my gosh, he is just so incredible. I knew when I saw pictures of him, I had to have him. And he looks just as beautiful, if not even more so in person here. His markings look fantastic. His color is fantastic. His design is fantastic. I just love everything about him. And he weirdly feels like owning an auction model is the best way I can describe it because of just how detailed he is and just the fact that a kind of similar design of this was put on an auction model in the past. So it just, to me, it's like feeling like owning an auction model in some ways. But I am just seriously super impressed. Like, look at these markings. They're very, very crisp. The edges look very good. There's only like a couple little spots here and there where the edges are a little, a little fuzzy or something, but for the most part, they look amazing. I'm not entirely sure how Briar 
did this wonderful image on the side of him but they did it in a beautiful way and it isn't decals it is painted on which I'm very happy about so we don't have to worry about that lifting up in the future or anything however they did this they did a fantastic job and I'm just so impressed by it love the cool little stripes on his legs those are really fun again they look really nice there might be like a couple little spots that aren't 100% perfect but it is pretty darn close to being perfect and there's the marking on his back I know at one point I was wondering about what this marking looked like exactly and well there there it is again beautifully done masking just gorgeous and then on the other side he has the same image there again it looks really good I don't know what they did but they did an amazing job and then his red mane which I also really like I know that was something not everyone liked but I actually even like it even more in person the color on it is gorgeous so there is the absolutely fantastic Nemea. And then I got two surprise models. And the first one I opened here is the black and white Tobiano Pinto, which I think is my favorite color out of all the surprise variations this year, even above the decorator, surprisingly. I like the decorator, but I'm really not crazy enough about it to pay the high prices for it or anything like that. I think it's pretty but I don't really have to have it but this guy was the one that I really wanted and so I ended up pulling him just directly from the special run models that I got and if I uh, can't tell already he is matte he is pearly though too which is why he's got some shine to him this guy's masking is a little more uh, blurry in places especially on like around his neck there around his mane see those areas where it's a little blurry and he's got little blurry spots right there too but I'm not planning on really showing him or anything I'm kind of not really doing much showing anymore anyway so I don't really mind as much if models aren't looking quite the best show wise I'm not a huge collector of the Hamilton mold which is probably a good thing so I didn't have to track down a bunch of models this year so I'm honestly just really happy with just this one variation of him and I do love his face with his cute little snip beautiful face on him I didn't even notice until later in the weekend that the little ribbon on his mane is brighter colors blue and yellow I know like the ribbons on the different models were kind of colored differently depending on the model's color and such but I kind of like that the one I have here has the uh, brighter blue and yellow it's got a bit of pinking which is nice I like those like little tiny spots in his pattern his tail's pretty Again, I like the pearly. I know a lot of people don't like the pearliness, but I do like the pearly white a lot. I think it's very beautiful. It's got some nice details on his hooves, spots and striping. And that's like on all of his hooves here too, which is very nice. You can see even more of those details on the other side here. It does have a little bit of overspray above his hoof right there. Again, some more beautiful spots on his pattern. He is just lovely and also to point out he is not a solid black but he has some beautiful like lighter undertones to his coat. You can see it in like his haunches a bit here but you can really see it on his shoulders there. You can see it's a little bit lighter in areas it's not just solid black which I do always like it when Briar does shaded blacks instead of just solid black models. So that is a really nice touch and something that they probably could have easily gotten away with just doing a solid black on this model, but they didn't. They did actually give it depth and dimension, which is super awesome. It also has the uh, stamp on his belly for Briarfest 2023 in silver and a VIN number on his hoof, which says March 23, which means he was made in March of 2023. So yeah, there is that beautiful boy. So there are my three special runs that I got directly with my Briarfest tickets, but I do have more special runs to show you, particularly that I did actually have another surprise model, which ended up being the Buckskin Tobiano Pinto, which was also a very beautiful model, but for some reason I wasn't like totally in love with him, and there was another special run I wanted a lot more, so I ended up trading that model for the next special run, 
peanutine or peanutine whatever it's called exactly but this absolutely adorable little donkey I had kind of thought about getting him before Briarfest but then actually at Briarfest I don't know what came over me and I just had to have this little guy he is incredibly adorable his color is beautiful his markings are beautiful he is just a amazing little model and I do think part of the reason I decided to that I just had to have this guy is the fact that he does kind of remind me of my mom just in the sense that I know she would have absolutely loved this little guy he would have probably been her favorite special run of this year and I just fell in love with him too and had to have him so I was more than happy to trade my second surprise model for this guy his color is just beautiful kind of hard to tell but he does have a little bit of like darker uh, shading on his shoulders and on his back to kind of be like done stripes and such that uh, the donkeys have and whatever but i like the rich brown color of his body in general look at these markings they're so cool so beautiful look at his face <laughs> his face is so cute and i also realized i think i only have like one normal brighty right now maybe two, but I don't have any of the kind of more fantastical, colorful, brighty models. So I realized I really would like to have a brighty that's got some cool markings and stuff. And well, here we go. Now I have one and I absolutely just adore him. His eyes are also just wonderful. They look so sweet and cute. They're very nicely painted. Yeah, he is just, just fantastic. He's got some like little lighter shading on the inside of his ears. He is just so stinking cute. So I was originally planning on just getting four special runs at Briarfest this year. While there were other ones I was really tempted by, I kind of assumed maybe I would just wait for a second chance sale or something like that to get them. But then things kind of worked out differently and I also got the special run whales on the Shannon Dell mold in matte. This one did also come in glossy, but I had no desire to get the glossy one. I wanted just the matte one. And so here he is. His color is really interesting. And I've seen a mix of how their dapples look. Sometimes their dapples look pretty nice and sometimes they look kind of eh. I feel like mine's kind of in the middle. Some of the dapples don't look so good. Other ones look pretty nice. Just kind of depends. But his color is really interesting and quite enjoy this mold. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get him. I ended up getting him at the Clarion for at cost. So it was like, I can't really pass up such an opportunity. He has a very sweet face with some nice pinking on his nose. Again, really pretty eyes. Briar did really a nice job on the eyes this year and all the models, they look beautiful. His masking's a little funky in places on his mane, but it's not too bad. His dapples, which I think look a lot better on this side compared to his other side. And I do like that he has silver painted horseshoes. That's fun. And there's a briar stamp on his belly. He's got the white tail, matches his mane and his legs. Again, like especially right here, I feel like the dapples look not, not the best right in this section. This part's not too bad, not amazing, but not terrible. So there he is. He is quite handsome. Just quite an interesting color too. It's part of the reason why I was just like, huh, his color is just so interesting and different. It's not something I even have in my collection. I don't think a model of this sort of color. So he is very unique. Then I also got this adorable set, which I did actually get a special run ticket for in a partial trade with someone. So I did pick them up at the special run tent. And I feel like this set looks better in person than it does in pictures. In pictures, I was a little iffy about the mare here. I wasn't like totally sold on her color. But then, I don't know, seeing her in person, I'm just like, wow, she looks awesome. I really, really like her. Her color is so unique and so pretty. Her shading is like really dark, really pretty. Go ahead and get a closer look at her. Look at that face. That is just crazy. <laughs> crazy markings on this mare. She looks awesome. Again, she's got some nice painted eyes. They're brown. She's got a little bit of spots on her muzzle. Nice pinking around her muzzle and eyes. 
She also has some pinking uh, behind her shoulder there. I know I was a little iffy about her legs before on the pictures on how they looked, but again, I feel like they look better in person than they did in the original uh, stock pictures of her for some reason. Strange shading on her legs. I actually really like it now. She's got the swishy tail, which is really awesome. I actually don't think I even have a single model on this mold with a swishy tail, despite how many models I have on this mold. I am pretty sure I've never had one that has the swish tail, so I'm really happy to have a model with that variation. It looks really cool. Even the markings like underneath her and stuff look really good. Just wow. Again, uh, Briarfest stamp, this time in gold. Mid number on hoof. The other side of her. Just beautiful coloring. Nice fun little spots mixed in. More pinking. And I love just how dark her face looks. It's so beautiful. And she does have a little bit of shading too in her mane and tail. See a bit of that? A little bit of gray mixed in there so they're not just solid white. Oh, it just looks so good. Briar really did an amazing job designing and then executing this design. It just looks fantastic. And then the baby. I would have been pretty happy with either the running one or standing one. Two full variations this year. But I kind of like the standing one more in a way just because I feel like it kind of goes with her a little better. Action stock horse full would have been fine too. And I mean, a lot of times foals are out there running around crazy while their moms are just kind of standing there like <laughs> whatever. But I don't know. I kind of liked, liked the look of this one with her a little more. So here's the little standing baby. Uh, his legs are a little like bent inward. I need to fix those later. He's got a cute little face. Again, very nicely painted little eyes. The markings on him are nice. And I like the shading too. There's like a lot of darker shading going on in some areas, which looks very good. Especially like on his hawks and on the back there. It's got a nice black tail. Again, just lots of fun little spots. Nice markings. Again, even the underside is pretty detailed. And yet again, there's a gold briar stamp on the bottom. Very cute little guy. And I actually do really like this full mold. I have, I think only a couple on this mold, but I think it is adorable and very underrated. Now for the last special run that I got from this Briar Fest, which is Jump and Drive. And again, I was kind of not expecting to actually get this model. I thought maybe I'd get him later on down the line, but there was one for sale for a good price and it was the loose mane and tail version, which is what I wanted. And I noticed that a lot of people were trying to trade their braided mane and tail version for the loose mane and tail. So I figured it might be kind of hard to get this variation later on because it's the more popular of the uh, two. And my goodness, the color on this model is so gorgeous. Plus he is uh, technically a Splash Pinto, I believe. And I love Splash Pintos. So I just kind of had to get him. He is just super gorgeous. That color really does pop in the gloss. Go ahead and get a closer look at him here. He also has some lovely pinking on his nose, but also some really cute little spots on his nose. I really like those. He has two blue eyes. Very beautiful. Nicely painted. Again, just gorgeous color on him. It is very unique. And I also just love the markings. They're so cool. I love the white tail and then all these cool white markings on his legs. He also has a gold uh, briar stamp on his belly and silver horseshoes. And just beautiful color. So I kind of ended up getting all the special runs uh, this year that I wanted, which was, again, kind of surprising. I was expecting of only getting, getting my absolute top favorites of the bunch, but then I ended up getting all the ones I wanted just kind of by uh, coincidence and happenstance. Not the easiest getting them all squeezed in for a picture there, but there are all the special runs I got at Briarfest this year. And I love them all. They are all just so beautiful. And I'm glad I managed to get all the ones I wanted so I don't even have to worry about trying to get any more like in a second chance sale or anything. Which I wasn't even able to go to the in-person second chance sale at Briarfest. So I guess that kind of ended up working out anyway. Now let's move on to some more models. 
Now we move on to items I got at the Briar stores at Briar Fest or Briar Fest stores, whatever you want to call them. We'll start off with Vila Tia, however you say her name. Again, I don't know how you pronounce stuff, but she is the absolutely gorgeous dominant white Pinto, technically, or something like that. I don't know. Whatever the case is that she is an all-white horse, and she is gorgeous on the Constantina mold. I did spend a little time hand-picking this model to get one that had some, like, kind of nice pinking and stuff. She's got lovely pinking on her muzzle and around her eye. Her eyes are just kind of like a... I guess, are they brown? A little bit? I think there's a little bit of brown in there. They kind of mostly look black right now. She's got some pinking on her ears, like on the inside of them. She is mostly white but on her body, but she does have little bits of pinking here and there, like on her chest. And there's like a little bit on her flank. It's very subtle, so it's not super obvious. But, oh my gosh, she is so gorgeous. And she is painted white, uh, at least from what I can tell. She's not just like the bare plastic necessarily. Got a nice, nice coat of white paint on her, and she is just, oh gosh, gorgeous. She has some beautiful, kind of like shell-colored hooves. She is just fantastic. I absolutely love her, and I love this mold. On her belly, it does say uh, breakfast in silver. She's got the really cool clear stand. Oh yeah, and she does also have some like painted chestnuts. I know she doesn't have like a whole lot of little details to show, but she does have some little details in there, even though she is almost solid white. And then I guess I will show the other uh, traditional scale limited edition I got, which I fortunately was actually able to buy from someone because she sold out both on Friday and Saturday when I was at Briarfest and by the time I got to the Briarfest store, which is the Tilly model here on the Othello mold. And I am still really shocked that this model kept selling out. She also sold out online too, I noticed. If I thought any of them would possibly be harder to get or sell out often, it would be her because she's a newer mold that hasn't had a regular run release yet and thought maybe customizers would be buying her up to work on and stuff. But no, instead it is uh, Tilly here that was really hard to get. I was just so surprised by that and still surprised by that, honestly. I was able to buy her from Mr. Bobby's Models. I adore her color and I love her mane and tail. I'll give you some close-ups of that in a moment here. Markings are nice. Just everything about her is lovely. Here is her face, and she does definitely have brown painted eyes. Some fun markings on her face. Little spots on her nose. Look how cute those are. I love it when the models have little spots on their nose. Beautiful spots on the face this side as well. Her forelock has some fun kind of pearly shine to it. And we get into those markings on her body there. Cool Sabino markings. This color, oh my gosh, I just love this color. It is nicely shaded. Just so beautiful, rich brown. And her Briarfest stamp is in black. And she was actually made into a mare. Which I am kind of surprised that Briar did that in a way. Just because this model has like always been a stallion or gelding. But that's fun that they did make her a mare. Yeah, look at those markings on her legs and her belly and stuff. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. Here you can get a better look at her mane, which is kind of like, uh, I almost want to say like rose gray colored in sections. And it's a little shiny, not extremely shiny compared to the tail though. I'll show you her tail. Look at that tail. Super shiny, super pearly. And it's kind of pinkish actually, or at least in this lighting right now. It's got like a little bit of, of pink to it, which is interesting. I didn't really notice that before until I started this unboxing video, but it's almost got a little pink tint to it, and I think it is just absolutely beautiful. She is a lovely model, and I'm glad I was able to get her and not have to stress out later on about trying to find one or something. So I did end up going to, like, the small Briarfest store on Friday, which I'm glad I did, because if I had waited, I would have not been able to get this really cool t-shirt. Sorry, I don't have the best, uh, like, zooming out on it here. But it is really cool that it has the same picture that's on Nemea, that special run I showed a bit ago. And it says Briarfest 2023. 
and I just absolutely love it. I love the color, love the design of it. It is just wonderful, and I was able to get one uh, sort of in my size. It could have been smaller, but that's okay. I'm just happy to have gotten a shirt at all, honestly, because last year when I went to the Briarfest store on Saturday afternoon, like, there were no shirts left at all. There was, like, maybe one that was not in my size, and I didn't like the design of it. This year they had a lot of great designs and of course again a lot of the apparel sold out. I'm really hoping that Briar puts more t-shirts and apparel and tank tops and whatever out next year because for the past two years all the clothing sells out by like Saturday afternoon and that is kind of just not great. There needs to be more for everybody. So very happy with that shirt. There was a really cute shirt that had this uh, design on it. I considered getting it, but I am trying to be careful about how many clothes I get because I do have a lot of clothes already. So I thought instead of getting a shirt, I will just get this coaster instead. It was like $3 and I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and get this because I love this design, but don't really need to buy another shirt this year. And it's very cool. I'm not actually going to use it as a coaster, by the way, because it's probably going to get damaged that way. Instead, I'm going to like hang it up with my other Briarfest memorabilia stuff. And again, I'm glad I went to the Briarfest store on Friday because apparently later on in Saturday, these awesome driving forward pins sold out, unfortunately. But I did get one for myself at least in my uh, pin collection. I do have a Briarfest pin for almost every year I went to Briarfest. I think there's only like one, maybe two that I'm missing. This pin design is fantastic and I'm glad they uh, did what I think they did last year as well, which is go back to doing this hard enamel style where it's actually like a nicely done version of the logo. I'm not really a big fan of some of the like kind of weird like little logo ones that are just like a little rectangle that don't really look that great. At least just not in comparison to the pins like this that are just, oh gosh, really nicely done. I really, really love this. This is beautiful. And to match it, I do also have a magnet, which was not at the Briarfest store. This was at the Briarfest info booth. And weirdly, they did not have them out at Friday, but they put them out on Saturday. So I'm glad I checked on Saturday for this because, again, I try to have a magnet for every year I go to Briarfest and uh, want to keep that collection complete. Especially, again, because this logo and stuff is just very nice. Then I have one, technically three, <laughs> warehouse finds from the Briarfest store on Friday. And I was really surprised to find any warehouse finds, honestly, because they really don't have a whole lot. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff they did have, I noticed were kind of expensive. They weren't really like super cheap. Like they had a bunch of classics, but they were all on the little bit more pricey side in my opinion. So I was super excited when I saw these little guys. They are the Spirit Riding Free plush horses that Briar had made before and they were only five dollars each which was awesome. That was actually a good deal in my books because I think they're originally more like eight or so each. So a little cheaper than they were in the past and I do not have any of these ones yet. They were one of those things where I meant to buy them at some point for my Spirit Riding Free collection and then never did and then by that point they no longer made them. So very very happy to have these. Can't wait to add them to my collection. They are really cute. Their faces are like so adorable and kind of goofy a little bit, but I love them so much. So I was happy to find like one sort of warehouse find this year. Because that was something else I was hoping for, was to go to the Briarfest store and actually be able to see some warehouse finds. So I did go through the Briarfest store one last time on Fri on Saturday. Can't remember my days hardly. And it was, again, just to see what was in there. It was pretty much cleaned out. But I also just needed a um, Silky plush because I forgot to buy one on Friday. I meant to buy one when I bought uh, the other store stuff. But I was kind of distracted by the spirit plushes, I think, and just forgot to grab one of him. So I grabbed one of him on Friday. I think it is funny. I was kind of skeptical at first of these little horse plushes that are sitting down like that and I was kind of like eh. I don't know how I feel about that compared to the past plush designs where they're just on all four of their hooves. Now I'm really loving this design. I think it is just so cute and I would be happy to see Briar keep making more plushes like this. Even if they do like their Halloween plush this year or something in this style, I'd be totally down for that because I think it is just so stinking cute. 
So there's little Sulky. He also kind of became my travel buddy for my trip home from Briarfest on Sunday. He's got the little Briarfest logo on his back and stuff. And the front is actually embroidered with little horseshoes and the Briarfest logo, and that looks very nice. Then my last Briarfest store purchase, which uh, there were only like maybe five or so of these left on Saturday, and I'm glad I was able to grab one, which is the carousel ornament for this year. And this one is actually sculpted by the same person who instructed the workshop I did, which is Laura Rocksmith. And she had said ahead of time, if you bought this ornament at Briarfest and brought it to her at the Artisan's Gallery that she would sign it and give a sticker. I don't know what happened to my sticker. I think it's in a thing with other stuff, so we might get to that later. But she did sign the back of it there, so that's really cool. And I do sort of collect the carousel ornaments. I'm not trying to collect all of them because I really should not be trying to collect all of them, but I do collect the ones I really like and this is one of those ones where I really like it. The sculpt and the colors and everything are just gorgeous. So there are my Briarfest store purchases of this year. I ended up having only one purchase in the uh, covered arena slash like the vendors at Briarfest which was this cute little dragon, uh, I guess you could say like medallion or just little resin figure thing from Maggie Bennett's booth. Uh, and it is classified as a second, so if it was to be like painted and stuff, it'd need a little bit of work for being cleaned up and whatnot. But I thought this uh, sculpt was just so cute that I uh, needed to grab one and hopefully at some point I will paint that up. And I thought that regardless, aside from like this weird like glue thing which I didn't even actually honestly notice earlier really but um it is kind of okay enough to just display on its own for now until I do eventually paint it up and like like the little gold on the nose and the hands it's kind of cute and then because I was wearing a name tag as she's been doing for a long time now she gives out little goodie if you're wearing a name tag and so the little goodie I got this year is this cute kind of like little mini medallion and it is beautiful. It kind of looks like a Frisian horse or something along that line. Just gorgeous. Again, would love to paint that at some point as well. But yeah, both of these will go to my medallion collection that is just continuing to grow right now. Next up here, I am going to be showing all the little fun freebies and things that people have given me at Briarfest this year. Starting off here, I have this awesome, I suppose it's like a little print, which was done by Onyx Arts. And it is perfect for the Briarfest theme, obviously, with these two driving horses. It's really cool. And then there is another piece of art here. And this one was done by Deedle Draws. And it is my horse persona. Or at least my current one. I'm going to be updating my horse Sona hopefully by the end of the year. But anyway, this picture is so great. They do some really great art. Here is a little bitty button. And this is from Horse Briar Crazy 1213. And it has got some adorable horse drawings on there too. Then Great Equestrian 241 gave me two custom models here that they had painted. There is a little stable mate. It's like a pretty dark chestnut. Got a big old hind sock on his leg there and some white markings on his face. And then this cute little fella also painted up. It looks like kind of like a bay or a seal brown. Has some other cute white markings as well. There's this uh, cute little bucket that was from Idicus Girl 96's demonstration on 3D printing and she was giving out these kind of little random freebie things that she had printed out. So there's a cute little, little bucket. There is an adorable stable mate here. I believe this is one of the uh, anniversary stable mates and this came from Briar Jinx who actually has a Clarion room just down the way from mine, so I end up getting to see her quite a bit during Briarfest since we are roomed so close to each other. Briar Lover one gave me some Bellicera cards. She's getting rid of a lot of her Bellicera cards, and so it's very sweet of her to let me have some of these because these are really cool and ones I do not have in my collection as far as I can remember. 
I used to love Bella Sarah so much when I was younger and still to this day I do just love these cards. They're so beautiful. Uh, Laura Rocksmith's daughter Anna was giving out these fun little resin like little Lego people she made. This is an adorable couple things here. A little Appaloosa Mini Winnie. Very cute. And this beautiful drawing of spirit was done by Green Day Briar Farms and I just adore it. It is so cute. I'm gonna have to put that with my other spirit stuff. Then at the social media meet, Heather Capica, I'm not sure how you say your name, hopefully it is uh, something like that. Well, it will be on screen too. Gave out these really fun headbands that light up and it was really fun. Everybody wearing these and I ended up with these cute purple cat ones that light up. They're fuzzy and fun and really appreciate that she made those for everybody. Oh, and they actually have different settings. I did not notice that until now. Also at, uh, well, a couple of these were given to me before the uh, social media meet, like this bracelet here, but I have a lot of bracelets that uh, I don't remember who they were from. I'm sorry, I, there are a couple items here I forgot to catch and write down everybody's names because otherwise by the time Briarfest happens and ends, I forget. But this really cool hand braided bracelet along with this one from someone else. And then there's a bunch of beaded ones here. There's just so many fun ones and I really liked the exchange of bracelets at Briarfest this year. I think that was a really fun idea and hope that we can maybe keep doing stuff like that again for future Briarfests because they are just so fun. This one says Nikolaus in the colors of the German flag and I think I'm gonna have to actually just like put this on my Nikolaus model because that would just be so perfect for him. <laughs> Someone was handing out, I'm assuming they were uh, working for Peter Stone in some way, they were handing out Peter Stone stickers. I also unfortunately did not catch the name of whoever gave me this amazing sparkly horse. And by the way, if there is anything that I show and I don't get your name on here, please let me know in the comments that you were the one that gave me the thing. And I'll do a pinned comment with the uh, proper credits for stuff. But look at this crazy, just absolute glitterified horse. I love it. It is so much glitter and it is mostly like purpley looking, which I love purple. So it is just, this is an awesome horse. Very sparkly. Very silly, but someone was giving out like little tiny plastic babies. <laughs> I love kind of just the weird random stuff people do at Briarfest sometimes. It makes it so fun. And then lastly, I thought I had this person's name written down, but I unfortunately do not. Someone gave me this really cool neck rope and I love the colors on it. It is beautiful. Again, I'm sorry I did not have your name written down and can't remember right now. So please let me know in the comments if you made this. All right, so that was all the fun little freebies, and now onto the final section of the video. Now we go on to Clarion purchases, or also Artisan Gallery purchases in this case, because I ended up buying this photo print from Pine Needle Studio. I just couldn't resist because it is one of my all-time favorite models for all kinds of nostalgic reasons, and I just love this kind of like rainbow effect going on there. That is really pretty. So I got that from them at the Artisan's Gallery. And then from, from Fox Glory 123's Clarion Room, I got this Vengeance Rain sticker of Avila and Rory Sheeran. And it is just so sweet. Look at those two cuties. I did end up with a handful of mini winnies here. I found a bunch of these for great cheap prices and I was like, I don't have any of these yet especially these unicorn ones. So I kind of just had to have them because they're really cool. I don't have any of these semi newer. They've been out for a while now, but these unicorn mini winnies, they're very cool. And then here's two horse ones. I'm actually not 100% sure if I have this one already or not. I know I have like the uh, buckskin one, I think, but I'm pretty sure I don't have this cute little gray rearing guy. Again, I'm always impressed by the mini winnies. I mean, look at the like, paint job on this. This little 
real tiny mass-produced model and he's got like a nicely painted mane and tail he's got some really nice shading on him that's just wild briar how do you do that that's that's pretty incredible i know people complain about briar's quality control and stuff all the time but like some of the stuff they do is is pretty amazing you gotta admit I did get this cute little owl, actually not for me, but for my boyfriend. I saw him for like a dollar and I was like, yep, I need to buy that for my boyfriend. I got him a little owl magnet last year and this year he's getting a little owl figure. I'm going to see if I can find like one little small treasure every year at Briarfest at the uh, Clarion Room shopping for him. And then I'm also probably going to give him this, which was just like in a free pile because I don't know, it was a little grump grumpy bird sticker and maybe he'll like it. I'm not sure, but if not, no big deal, it was free. At Brianna, or Blackheart Stables, room at the Clarion, she was selling some very cute flower crowns with matching bracelets. So I ended up getting a purple and then this like kind of pinkish peach colored one because I was actually wanting a flower crown for me to wear at the Ren Fair before this year. So I was like, oh, that is perfect. I've been kind of needing a flower crown. So I have two different ones here that can go with two different dresses I have. Let's take a break from the smaller items and go to some bigger models, specifically ones that were on my Briarfest wish list this year. One of which was this beautiful guy, the Rainbow Seven Arts Surprise model that I regretted not buying at Briarfest last year. So I was actually able to get this guy from Robbie or Outskirt Stable and actually arranged ahead of time at Briarfest to buy this guy from him. And he is just beautiful. I love the kind of pearly, shiny, like finish or whatever's going on on him. All these fun colors, especially like on his tail and his back legs here. I love his beautiful like purples and pinks and blues going on. Those are so pretty. And he's got the green and the yellow and the orange and the red. And the red's kind of like almost like a pinkish, orangish kind of red, at least on like his leg and stuff. And then on his face, it's like almost a little purpley with some of those details. He is just beautiful, beautiful coloring on this guy. And I'm very happy to have him. He is from Briarfest 2021, by the way. I believe now I actually have all the color variations of the uh, Seven Arts Surprise model aside from the Roan variation, which I don't have a huge desire to get because I'm not like trying to die hard Conga the Dundee mold anymore. But yeah, I've ended up with quite a lot of the uh, Seven Arts Surprise models and I'm very happy to have this guy. He is just so beautiful, such beautiful colors. Another model on my wish list here I was able to get is Troubadour from the Premier Club. This is one I've actually had like a couple chances to buy online in the past and didn't and kind of regretted it. Fortunately, there were quite a few people at the uh, Clarion selling this guy, so he was not too hard to get. I just love the color on him. I love that he's a splash pin too. And I probably would have ended up getting this guy sooner if I had fell in love with this mold quicker. But at first I was just kind of like, yeah, he's a nice mole, but I'm not sure how I feel about him yet. And then once I got the blue troubadour in hand, I was like, okay, I actually really like this mold a lot. Kylie Parks did an amazing job on him. This particular guy isn't in the best of shape. He does have like some issues here and there, but again, I'm not like planning to show or anything. As long as I like it enough to display and have on my shelf and whatever, then it's good enough for me. But I just, oh gosh, love the coloring, love those markings, love that mapping, love his face. His face is fantastic, very beautiful. Coloring on his mane too is very nice. I do also have uh, his box and his certificate of authenticity as well. I just kind of didn't feel like pulling it out right now, but I did get that stuff with him too. Now for an unofficial set of models here that I actually wanted ever since they came out, whatever year it was that they came out, I can't remember. I will stick that on screen. But I've always wanted these cute little foals. They came originally with a blanket and a little uh, bracelet each. And I probably should have bought them at the time because trying to get their blankets and bracelets with them is really hard. But it was one of those things where at the time I kind of just assumed that, oh, you know, I'll be able to get these guys 
later on. I don't have to buy them right away because they're regular runs. And then I uh, kind of never bought them. And then they went out of production and I never got around to actually getting them. So this year I was like, oh yeah, I really want these foals. I'm going to go ahead and try to get them. So I managed to get these three and um, I think I got them all three from different people. You got the cute little, this is little sweet pea. And she did end up coming with her blanket, which I am happy about because it is a beautiful purple blanket. The other ones I don't really mind as much not having their blankets. I do wish she had her little bracelet though because again a little purple bracelet would have been really cute to wear. But oh well. There's a little sweet pea. And this is Milo on the running full mold. He's actually in pretty nice shape. Both, both of them are actually. They're very, very nice. And then this shadow one here I actually got from a fan and I'm so sorry I didn't get your name. She does have a couple marks, but those are easy enough to fix up. And again, I don't care if they're perfect. And she did also come with the bracelet at least, which is cool. And the bracelet, which I don't even know if I looked at super well in the past, but it does have like the kind of like little Briar American Saddlebred on it and a horseshoe and it says Briar. It's very cute. So yeah, there are those three little cuties and they were from my Briarfest wishlist. And I was about to say that was everything from my Briarfest wishlist, but that is not true. There are actually some spirit items that were from my wishlist too that I got, which I guess I'll go ahead and show those next. All right, there is one spirit item here that was not on my wishlist, which is this little boomerang figure from like the spirit writing free little blind bag things. I just saw him and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure I don't have him in my collection already. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab him. So he is very cute. He is the little like Just Play brand ones, not Briar. And then the other spirit stuff here was on my wish list. This Spirit and Rain box, little trinket or treasure box. And I do have the regular spirit one already. And I was like, oh yes, I'd like to try and get the other one as well. So that was a super awesome find. I am getting to the point where I think I have almost all of the briar spirit stuff i am missing like other spirit stuff from other brands and whatnot but from briar specifically i'm getting getting close to having all the briar spirit models and other items and things so it is like brand new here too which is super awesome there is the lid of it oh it is just so beautiful and then there's the bottom part spirit collection it's got that pretty common picture of Spirit and Rain on the side, and then that screen cap of them from the movie. Incredibly sweet. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get my Spirit collection all set up together at some point so you all can see it all together, and so I can see it all together. Hopefully someday sooner than later I'll make that happen and do a Spirit collection tour for everybody. Now the next two things are also Briar. And it is the porcelain rearing spirit and the porcelain baby spirit, which are the only two I was missing for the like little porcelain spirit collection. I have Esperanza, I have Little Creek, and I have Rain, but surprisingly, I just never had these other two. So I'm very excited to add them to that collection. I normally do not like porcelain, by the way. I don't like collecting it because it breaks so easily and stuff. But I make an exception for the spirit stuff. So I now believe I have all of the porcelain things. Because I have these little porcelain horses. I have the two big porcelain spirit and rain. And I also have the two porcelain boxes. Uh, I do not have the pewter ones. But I don't even know if I'm going to try to buy the pewter uh, spirit stuff. I'm not really as crazy about them. Especially if I already have the porcelain versions, which... I just in general think are more beautiful. One of those things, or maybe if I come across the pewter ones for like a really great price, I'll snatch them up, but otherwise I'm just not gonna look for them too hard. All right, now these next two Spirit and Rain things, I'm gonna count as being sort of on my Briarfest wishlist because I saw them before Briarfest. There was a place called Midwest Hobby Horse that had a room at the Clarion, and I hadn't heard about them until they shared on Facebook that they were gonna be at Briarfest and what they were gonna have for sale. And I saw that they had these super cute mini handmade Spirit and Rain little hobby horses. And when I saw them, I was like, yes, I have to have those. And they also had big versions as well. Unfortunately, the big ones were like 
a little too big, I could already tell, to go into my suitcases. But if I was driving home, I would have definitely bought both the large Spirit and Rain as well. Here, I'll take their little uh, price tags off so you can get a better kind of look at them. But they have like yarn mane and tails. And it feels like minky fabric for their body. And they are just so cute. And I will definitely be sticking these in my Spirit and Rain collection. And this person had a ton of other options to choose from, by the way, not just Spirit and Rain. They had a ton of just different horse breeds and different horse colors, all kinds of stuff. I'm hoping maybe at some point I will order a big Spirit and Rain from them. I do like these have some like details. I don't know if they're airbrushed exactly, but they have some sort of details painted on them, which look very nice. Once I found out that their room was open, I just rushed down to their room at the Clarion, even though it was at like the other side of the hotel for me, because I was like, I need to bring these home. I did not want to risk going there later and them to be sold out. So that is all the uh, spirit stuff, but I still have more Clarion finds to show you. I have a Clarion find here that was actually free. It also came originally with a full box, but I couldn't really take the whole box home, so I just cut out the little bottom portion of it here. But it is a horse paint by number set. I actually really like paint by numbers, uh, particularly the vintage ones. So I have the two paint by number uh, things here, which you're probably not going to be able to see too well. But I have those there. And then also the paints, really mostly just to kind of match colors. Not probably necessarily use these paints because they're probably maybe not so good anymore. Another set of paint by numbers to add to my paint by number collection. And I just really love the look of vintage paint by numbers for some reason. So it'll be cool to finish these someday. I have a kind of strange fun find, which is a flocked classic model. Sometimes I really like the flocked models I originally used to not do. It's just like, yeah, well, they're kind of weird, don't really want them for myself, but now I occasionally really love it when I can find a cute flocky model to add to my collection. And this guy is like in really nice condition and he's got like a little dorsal stripe, so he's like sort of a done, I guess. He has uh, painted eyes. He's got some fun little details and stuff on him. He is super cute. So when I saw him, I was just like, yes, I have to have this guy. He is too cool, too cute. Need, need another flocky horse in my collection. He is a Briar model, by the way, and someone custom flocked him. He did not originally come from Briar like that. I also ended up getting a, oh gosh, Schleichhorse and Knight here. I love these older Schleichhorse sets, especially like the Knight ones and whatnot. I'm pretty sure I hopefully don't already have this one. The Knight really does not want to stay on here. I think they're just so cool. I will eventually be able to also show you guys my full Schleich collection because I have so many older Schleich horses and animals and things. I even have like some of the really cool older dragons and dinosaurs and whatnot. So at some point I will give you guys a collection tour of that stuff as well someday, hopefully whenever I can have it on display. But yeah, there's cool, cool Schleich horse and knight. All right, let's go ahead to medallions. I have three medallions to show you. And I'm trying not to go too crazy on medallions since I have acquired quite a collection now and I need to just stop buying them just to buy them sort of thing. But these three that I got I really love and I'm really excited about. So there's this one which is a cool horse skull and I'm unfortunately not sure who it is. I can't quite read the signature. I also like kind of recognize this one like I feel like I've seen it before on social media somewhere. It looks like it's from 2019. It might be J something. I'm not sure, but if you uh, know whose medallion this is, you can let me know. But I thought this was really cool. It's like a kind of bluish purple and it just looks awesome. <laughs> I really like it. And the funny thing is I was actually uh, regretted not getting it right away at a room. And when it opened back up, I saw that this was still there. So I was like, yes, I need to buy that because I regretted not getting it the night before. And so I'm glad I ended up picking that up. The other medallion I bought here is this really cool kind of Halloween medallion. This was sculpted by Deanne. Yeah, I don't know how to say their last name. It's, it's a, uh, I'll just show it there because I don't know how to pronounce that last name. 
This is a really cool medallion from Deanne that was apparently from a model horse show, actually. I think the person sold it that said it was given to judges or something like that. And there's actually a judge button here for Halloween hoedown. So that was kind of cool that she uh, gave this with it as well. And it is just a really cool medallion with like a uh, maybe headless horseman, but with a pumpkin head sort of thing, riding a horse there. Or you could just have it, have it be some other kind of Halloween themed medallion. So obviously as someone who loves Halloween and who is loving medallions as well, I just had to get this, it's super cool. And obviously this one is also kind of a almost Halloween-y thing. And you'll notice a theme here with the final medallion I bought as well, which is this really cool Kelpie medallion. She is by Fry Dance Studio and is so awesome. Let me try to make it so you can see the details a little better. So she's got a very, very spooky face. Look at those teeth. Those are some deadly teeth right there. A really gorgeous mane and tail that flow down. And what's really cool too about this is that this medallion can actually stand up like that. You don't have to lay it flat like these other medallions do. She is one that sits up like that, which I really love. It is so cool. I can't wait to paint this. I have no idea what I'm going to paint it yet. At some point I will get around to start painting all my medallions and stuff and I can't wait because I love them so much. They are so fun and so pretty. This one is so cool. So there's a little collection of medallions I got this year. All right, I still have six models left to show you and this time they're all traditional scale. Since I had some spooky themes with all the medallions I got, Let's have a, another spooky themed model with this Peter Stone. Apparently this guy's name is Casper and I actually do not have any Halloween Peter Stones. There's been a couple times in the past where I really wanted to get one but I wasn't really able to spend a whole lot on like a Halloween Peter Stone before which if I could go back today I would have definitely spent a little bit more on some nice Peter Stones that I've seen for sale at like model horse shows and stuff. But regardless, this guy is pretty cool. He's got three little ghosts on both sides of him. He is unfortunately actually pretty yellowed. I kind of didn't realize how yellowed he was when I bought him. But I'll try to have him get some sun time and whatnot. But he's got three ghosts on both sides of him. He's done up in kind of like a uh, flea bitten gray in gloss with a bit of like a kind of shine to him, a bluish iridescent shine maybe underneath the gloss or maybe just in the gloss I'm not sure he is pretty cool and I was kind of like hmm I kind of can't resist getting this Halloween horse to add with my other Halloween horses especially since like I said don't have any Halloween Peter Stones getting one's probably going to be really really tough to come by and this guy's pretty cool so why not add him to the collection Next up, I have one non-horse animal to show, which is a pronghorn. I do already have a pronghorn in my collection, but I have the one that's kind of more like a tannish brown. This one's kind of a bit more of a reddish brown, and he was like a later release. And I kind of always wanted this guy. I saw him there for a good price and was like, yep, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take him, I guess. I think he is so cute and I just really like pronghorns in general actually. I think they're very cool animals, but I do just love a lot of animals in general. Yeah, he's just very cool. This guy's in really nice condition too. He only has like one or two like tiny little rubs right there and otherwise he is in absolutely gorgeous condition. So for his price and everything, I was like, yeah, I can't can't pass this guy up, especially since I just love the color on him so much. It's, very beautiful on the markings and everything. Fantastic little fella. Next up, let's go ahead, I guess, and look at the Vintage Club model I got. Cooper, who was actually one I was thinking about buying a lot last year and never ended up buying him. But this year I was like, yeah, all right, I'm going to go ahead and buy him because I keep thinking about him and keep thinking he's really cool. So I do have his little blanket and bridle here and box here as you can see which is kind of folded down right now but weirdly enough I don't normally ever collect this mold I'm not really a fan of this mold honestly I don't like really dislike it it's just not really one I collect 
However, this color is just so perfect for it. I don't know why, but I just felt like I had to have him in my collection. The color is so gorgeous. He is like painted white, so his white is super bright and beautiful. Look just how intricate, too, these markings are. They are crazy awesome. He's got a bit of pinking, especially on his face. He's got some lovely pinking and things going on, especially on this side. Look how beautiful that face is. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I just love him. He's so cool. Definitely glad I went ahead and bought him. He is just a fantastic dude, and it is fun that he comes with a little bit of tack, too. This is one of those Vintage Club models that wasn't very popular, so I believe I was able to get him for actually below his original cost, which is always nice. Here is a another fun black and white model, but this time it is a Pinto on the Peter Stone Ish mold. I seem to always come home with at least one Ish model every Briarfest, it seems, or at least every Briarfest since like 2015. So I was looking at like a lot of different Ish models and wasn't sure which one I wanted to come home with. I am trying to be careful and not just like buy any Ish I see. I really want to make sure I only buy one that's like a color I really like and is also a color that I like don't already have. Like I don't really want to have like three Bay Pintos that are all very similar or whatever. I want to try and mix it up and have models that have either like very different colors or very different markings. I don't want to have like the same sort of models too much in my collection. But I saw this guy for a great price and I was like, wow, he is really cool. I love his markings. They are awesome. He is not in perfect condition. He has like some shiny marks and stuff, but I don't really care. I just think he is a beautiful, beautiful model. And I like that he has mapping around his markings too. That's a really nice touch. And I especially see it there on his face. I was like, he's got mapping, he's got really cool markings, he's this really beautiful black and white. And I was like, yep, I think this is, this is the ish I want to come home with. He is beautiful. I did see quite a few other ish models that were actually pretty good prices, but I noticed that they were like super duper yellowed. And I was like, hmm, I'd kind of rather not spend the money on some ishes that look like they're going to need a lot of sun time in order to whiten up and stuff. And this guy looks like he's even painted white, possibly, so he's already beautiful in color and stuff. So I'm very glad that he is the one that I decide to come home with this year. He will make a great addition to the collection. All right, I have only two more models left to show you all. I will show what is actually possibly my very first purchase of the Clarion, which is this beautiful custom Proud Arabian Mare. And I just about fell over when I saw her because she was very cheap and at first I was thinking okay surely the offside of her must be like destroyed or something for her to be such a good price but no she is like fantastic perfect condition for a vintage custom and she is in fact a vintage custom it looks like she is from 92 it says maybe kind of hard to tell and I'm not sure on those initials if it's like CD or CO I'll have to maybe do some more uh, searching later to see if I can find out who did her but she is a beautiful roan with a beautiful absolutely beautiful mohair mane and tail oh my gosh she is just absolutely stunning vintage customs are one of those things where I didn't really collect them for a long time because I was just kind of eh about them but now I really do love some of the vintage customs and really get a kick out of seeing them. And then on the rare occasion, like this time, of being able to add one to my collection is just like, oh my gosh, so awesome. They're so beautiful and often underappreciated. So I'm so happy to have this girl. She is definitely gonna have a, a loving place in my collection. Oh my gosh, just so much adore this girl. She is so beautiful. Just love her coloring too, of how she's got like the darker legs and a little bit like darker underneath. But then that really fun kind of just almost spray canned, honestly, like kind of roaning on her. But I think it looks really good and really cool. And now we move on to the last model I have to show you. I will double check that I showed everything, but I think I did. This is kind of a weird model because it was not one I meant to buy originally. She was not on my wish list. I was not planning on buying her and I kind of impulse bought her. 
And for a little bit, I was kind of regretting buying her because I was like, oh no, I spent kind of a lot on this model and I did not mean to get her this year or anything. But this is Heartland, who is a Briarfest 2007 special run. And I just hardly ever see this girl for sale these days. And when I saw her for sale in one of the rooms, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a Heartland. I haven't seen one of these in a while. And yeah, I don't know what came over me. I just ended up buying her. And then the funny thing is I ended up seeing like three more later on at the Clarion that weekend. So I still, I guess, have a little bit of mixed feelings about buying her just because she was not cheap. And if I hadn't have bought her, I probably would have ended up coming home with a banner instead because there were some banners there and I was thinking about buying one. But because I kind of had the expensive purchase with her instead, I was a lot more hesitant to buy another uh, more expensive model. But I can't say that I really regret buying her either just because she really is a gorgeous model. Seeing her with this light, she does look like a little bit yellowed, so she might have to have a little, a little time in the sun as well. She is beautiful, and she does remind me a lot of like earlier days of collecting. She was a model that a lot of people really were excited to have or wanted to have, it seemed like at the time. And I don't know, I just felt like she was a part of a lot of collection tours and I really don't know how to describe it, but she's got like a weird nostalgia thing attached to her for me. And she really is just beautiful. The coloring, absolutely gorgeous. And I do love this mold. I love the ruffian mold. She is fantastic. So in the end, I do not regret getting her. There were, were a few moments there though where I was like, oh my gosh, I probably shouldn't have bought this horse. But in the end, I am happy that I brought her home. Even though she was one, I was definitely not originally planning to look for her or buy or anything. Okay, I uh, sort of managed to squeeze all my Clarion purchases together here into one kind of a picture thing. And it's kind of funny because I feel like by looking at my Clarion purchases, you can kind of guess the sort of models I like to collect. I like to collect the kind of weird oddities like the flockies and ones with mohair. I like to collect some spooky things. I obviously like to collect spirit stuff. And you might notice that I seem to really quite like Appaloosas and Pintos, considering there's technically a three Appaloosas here, or actually four Appaloosas, and then like four Pintos, I guess. So yeah, there's just a fun collection of the stuff I found at the Clarion this year. Unfortunately, there's going to be like really no way for me to get like a nice collection picture of all the models I got at Briarfest this year together. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if there is anything you got from Briarfest this year that you would like to share. Let me know if you got any special runs or any fun Clarion finds or any fun finds via online shopping. Whatever it is that you're excited about that you got this year, let me know. I love seeing what other people get at Briarfest too. And when I have time, I'm going to be watching other people's Briarfest haul videos as well. YouTube generally doesn't like it if you link videos in the comments. It will usually hide comments. So instead of linking your video, you can just say, hey, I have a haul video and I will add it to my list of haul videos to watch later. Thank you for watching. I hope you all had an awesome Briarfest and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!